Hey everyone, my name is Ben Shipley. I am technical and operations support here at Flock Audio, and today we're going to go over unboxing and setting up your patch series unit. The Flock Audio patch series is the next level in analog routing technology. In this video, we'll be going over the basic setup of a patch series model, as well as the patch app to help you get started. We'll be using our flagship model, the patch, as an example, but the same principles apply to every patch series model. Now let's briefly go over unboxing your patch series system. When we first open the box, the first thing you'll see is two pieces of paper. One of them is a hardware index setup template, which we'll use to help set up our analog hardware. The other one is a patch quick start guide, which will help you get set up with your new patch series model. We'll also find a power supply, a 10 foot USB cable, an IEC power cable for your region, and a patch series model. Now that our patch is unboxed and everything in the box has been unpackaged, let's start connecting it to our analog hardware. To do this, I'll need DB25 breakout cables like the ones I have here. Now let's spin around the units and go over how to connect them all together. Before we make our connections, we'll grab our hardware index setup template and have a pen at the ready. Whenever we make a connection, we'll write it down on the hardware index setup template so we know what to put in our hardware setup menu when we're setting up our hardware in the patch app. Here we have the rear panel of the patch and the Audioscape engineering hardware. Let's start connecting them together. I'll start by connecting the outputs of my patch to the inputs of my analog hardware. I'll connect outputs one and two to the inputs of my first stereo compressor. I'll connect outputs three and four to the inputs of my second stereo compressor. And I'll connect output five to the input of my mono EQ. And outputs six and seven are going to go to the inputs of my interface. Now I'll do the same with the inputs of my patch and I'll connect them to the outputs of my analog hardware. Now we can connect our power cable and USB cable. Once you've connected your analog hardware to your patch series system, it's time to download and install the patch app software. To download the patch app, we'll go over to flockaudio.com downloads and click the download link that corresponds to our operating system. I'm using a Mac, so I'll click on the Mac download. Now that I've downloaded the patch app, I'll go to my downloads folder and launch the installer. I'll go through the installation prompts and install the software. Once the software is installed, it will show up in our launch pad. If we were on Windows, it would show up in our start menu. From here, I'll launch the patch app. Let's move on to labeling your analog hardware using your hardware setup template. The reason we don't see anything in our hardware index is that I've chosen to hide my unassigned rack spaces in the user customize menu. By default, they are set to show so this will look slightly different for you when you first open the app. With the patch app open, we'll grab the hardware list that we annotated when we connected our hardware to our patch series unit. Now we'll open up our hardware setup menu and we'll copy the information from our hardware list into that menu. These labels determine what your hardware will look like when placed in the routing grid. We'll start with the interface because it highlights an important feature of the patch app, which is input and output linking. By clicking on this lock icon in the middle of the hardware setup menu, you can choose whether the input and output of a channel are shown separately or together in the routing menu. For analog hardware such as compressors, EQs, and the like, this is a perfect way to simplify your routings. For sources and receivers, such as audio interfaces, we need to make sure that the lock icon is set to be unlocked so we can place the outputs of our interface at the top of our chain and the inputs of our interface at the bottom. The same concept can be applied to boosted microphone signals, summing mixers, and the like. If we have a piece of stereo gear connected to our patch unit, we'll click this stereo pairing button here. This will pair the left and right channels of the unit together so that we can drag them both into our routing grid at the same time. To use each channel separately, simply hold shift when dragging them in. Now we'll take a look at the patch app software and walk you through it. Now that we've set up our hardware, we'll take a quick tour around the patch app and familiarize ourselves with its features. The app itself is divided into four sections, the hardware index, the routing grid, the toggle and control center, and the stored routing section. 
On the left, we have our hardware index. This is where all of the hardware we've cataloged in the hardware setup menu will be, and it's where we can drag and drop our hardware from. The biggest part of the app's main screen is the routing grid, which is where you can create your routings. The path assignments on the top of the routing grid are for easy organization, and we can rename any of these paths by right-clicking on the path name and clicking Edit. The toggle section at the bottom of the grid is where we can solo, mute, and clear any individual path, as well as move it horizontally through the routing grid. Before we create our first routing, though, I'll quickly take you through the rest of the app. Down below the routing grid, we have our toggle and control center. This is where we can make bulk actions in the app, such as muting or clearing the entire routing grid, bank between sets of eight paths, and control the front inputs and outputs of our unit. To the right of this menu is the Patch App Settings menu. Here, we can see information about our patch unit, check for software and firmware updates, access any manual for the patch series systems, set up our stored routing's quick strip, change some of the app's functional and cosmetic parameters, set up multiple patch series units, contact our support center, restore our software to factory settings, toggle the app to stay on top of other windows, and quit the patch app. There are also a few keyboard shortcuts in the patch app to help you work even quicker. To mute all paths, you can hold Command and M. To bypass any digital rack space, you can hold Command and click on that rack space. To remove digital rack spaces, you can hold Option and click on a rack space. To unsolo all soloed paths, you can hold Command and click an S at the bottom of a path. To bank through the routing grid in sets of eight, you can use the period and comma buttons. To scroll path by path in the routing grid, you can use the left and right arrows. Let's take a look at our DAW, and I'll show you how to route audio through your patch series unit. With the session open in my DAW, I'll create a duplicate of the track that I want to process. I'll send the original track out of an output that's connected to my patch unit, and I'll set the input of the duplicate track to the corresponding inputs. Now, if I record the duplicate track, I'll be recording through all of my outboard hardware. Creating a routing in the patch app is incredibly easy. Now let's take a look at how to do it. I've added a few extra pieces of hardware into my hardware setup to make this concept easier to explain. The routing grid in the patch app works on a simple top to bottom, left to right principle. Signal flows start at the top of the routing grid and work their way down until the signal leaves the patch app for the last time. For example, I'll make a quick mono routing. So what this routing is doing in the physical world is it's going out of my interface, into my compressor, into my EQ, and back into my interface. This is represented in the patch app from top to bottom, with the interface outputs on the top and the interface inputs on the bottom. If I wanted to, I could drag my EQ over my compressor to swap their order in the signal chain like this. Now we'll create a multed routing in order to AB two different signal chains. We'll start in the same way as we started the last routing, with a single interface output in the top slot of path 1. We'll build the same routing as before, but this time, we'll also click this arrow here to engage a mult. This splits our signal so we can send one incoming signal to multiple outputs. We'll send this signal through another hardware processor and into a different input of my interface. Now, if I record from both of those inputs at the same time, I can instantly compare two different signal chains on the exact same source signal. Now we'll go over how to make a stereo routing. We'll use the same concept as the mono routing we made, but we'll use two channels instead of one. I'll place two outputs of my interface on the top of my routing grid, and the corresponding two inputs at the bottom. From the hardware index, I'll drag two stereo processors into the signal chain, like so. If I want to multi stereo signal to compare two different signal chains, I can do it by clicking the right arrow at the bottom of my right path. From here, I can activate two mults like so, and drag hardware into the multed signal path. If I want to save this routing to instantly recall it later, I can go to the top right of my screen to the stored routing section and click Save. This will bring up a Save As window, where we can name our routing. Once we've saved our routing, we can recall it instantly by opening our stored routings menu and clicking on it. If this is a routing you use often, you can recall it even faster by using the stored routing's quick strip. To do this, we can navigate to a slot on the quick strip, right click it, and click Edit. This will open a menu where you can choose routings to have in the quick strip. We'll choose the routing we just saved, 
and it will show up in the corresponding slot in the quick strip. This way, instead of opening a menu first, you can load your most used routings with one click. You can customize the patch app to your personal preference. Now let's go over how to do that. If we go into our settings menu and click on user preferences, we'll be presented with a few customization options. From here, we can change how our unit's fan operates, the app's display language, the text font, the app scale, and the front I.O. settings for each unit. If we navigate to the Customize tab, we can change more preferences, such as whether to show or hide certain app functions, enable or disable the unit's master 48 volt phantom power, enable or disable menu animations, and restore all of the app's clearable prompt notifications. Thanks for taking the time to watch this setup overview of the patch series.